Good morning. Or afternoon. Got a checkpoint here. I'm guessing I'm not gonna get stopped. They probably just stop all vehicles other than big rigs. Thanks for backing up. Appreciate it. Wide load. Yeah, I got security companies and all sorts of agencies making sure only big rigs turn off here. It's actually afternoon. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, please like and subscribe. Yeah, yeah, that good. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Beautiful Monday afternoon. I should turn my shoulder cam on. Hi. <laughs> so we're on the Coca-Cola. Just leaving Merritt southbound. I didn't think we'd get here in the daylight. But it's looking good. It's looking good. Swap back to my uh, regular quad axle trailer. My first time on the Coca-Cola since all the flooding and all the road washouts and stuff like that. So apparently there's a bunch of zones where it's 50 kilometers per hour. So we'll see how that goes. Mm, cookie. Nom, 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 nom. Forgot some of my food at home. So I'm short on food, I'll have to figure that out. I thought about, well, just suggested stopping at the Merrick Walmart and running in to get food, but I'm like, there's so much snow here, I don't know if I'd be able to get in there and back out again without getting stuck. I'm like, I've got some food in here. I'm just missing, missing some of my lunches, so. I have lunch for tomorrow. So by Wednesday, I'll have to figure out, even if I stop at a fast food joint twice, two times, I'd have enough food for the rest of the week. We'll see if VHF is safe to use. You know what, we just shouldn't try it. Then I have to figure out where I have to edit out current cuss words. No, let's just leave it off. says I'm supposed to take Highway 97 through Osoyas and Orville, head south all the way to I-90, and then take I-90 to Seattle. But the Snoqualmie Pass is closed. U.S. passes seem to close a lot earlier than Canadian passes. 
gotta give Canadian snow clearing crews kudos to keeping these passes open because the U.S. can have less snow and they're closed. Now, some of their passes have a lot more snow. What's it, Donner Pass? 17 feet in the last weeks. 17 feet. Insane. They've got more snow. And more snow by the end of December than they do normally all year round. So yeah, I haven't come over here, Coquihalla Highway through hell. A long time. For those of you that always question, why do they call it the highway through hell? It's because of the TV show. called it that. There's Hell's Gate and stuff like that on Highway 1, so the term Highway Through Hell kind of was coined here and there, but once a TV show came around, it, it became the prominent way to name this highway. It's the Coquihalla. It's a beautiful highway. Not as beautiful as Highway 1 or Highway 3 through these same mountains, but still a beautiful highway. It's just a big high-speed four-lane to six-lane highway. It used to be a toll highway. Technically, it's six lanes are right here, but yeah, maybe two lanes on the other side, so maybe five lanes here, but can't drive where everybody else drives. The best, the best track. I'll drive the best track without impeding the traffic that's going quicker than me in the left lane. Supervisor sent me my wide load permit for Washington. Some kind of message on Isaac system, but I can't read it.
take our time down these hills. I don't need to be the fastest guy on the road. They look pretty slushy here. Could easily grab you and move you over a lane. Yeah, so I recorded this on Monday, January 3rd, 1.30 p.m. Like I said, it's going to be interesting to see what kind of changes there are by the washouts. That'll be closer to the end of the video, where all the washouts were. a little bit. Got my new case for my Osmo. It's an aluminum case. Just started so it's nice and cool but we'll see if it's nice and warm by the time we're done. I'm hoping it absorbs a lot of the heat from the Osmo. It's the whole point to the case so if it doesn't then it's a waste of money. some raspberry pie heat sinks. Apparently they use like thermal tape and just stick onto stuff so they're meant for a little raspberry pie but I'm like those little mini heat sinks would be great to put in little spots maybe on the side of the aluminum case. Absorb some more heat. Yeah it's snowing harder up here. switch over to the right to the to the west west side. I'm gonna have to top off washer fluid sometime today. I've been using a lot of it. Friday's video where I was stuck in that traffic jam, the uh, Highway Through Hell, Hell uh, TV show camera crew was on site and they recorded that, so no, I didn't see a camera pointing anywhere towards me and I was too far away from the accident anyway, so I won't be on TV if that makes it onto the episode. So anyone that doesn't watch those shows doesn't quite understand the reference. It's not the worst highway in BC. I don't know why it's named that, but Cooney Pass is much worse than this pass. Much worse. Having said that, some people say the reason why this pass is worse is because the people that drive on this pass. So Cooney Pass, 
has mostly people running it that run Kootenai Pass all the time. More local drivers that drive it a lot more often, like myself. This highway has the people that have never driven in the mountains ever on it. If you're coming from Manitoba and you have a load going to Vancouver, this is the highway you're going to be on. watching my channel for the first time I do a video every single day well five days a week anyway well there's a six there's a bonus video for all the people that hit the join button down below if you're a member you get you get six videos a week mostly driving British Columbia mountains Washington mountains Idaho Every now and then you get something a little different. A run to Texas. Mostly running the Canadian US border between BC and Washington. but it's not getting up to the top part of the windshield. It's a little bit annoying. The truck is so flat and straight. As soon as we get in higher wind, it doesn't spray water properly. More aerodynamic windshields do a better job of that. This is a uh, Kenworth W900L. L standing for long nose. It's the longer version, a little bit heavier version. We've got a Cummins Baby 500 horses. I know if you're a Flatlander, 500 horses is lots, but here in the BC Mountains, 500 horses is not much. Last week riding the Super B. That was a lot of work. That was a lot of work for them, this truck. 25 kilometers per hour trying to climb up the hill. Is that 15 miles an hour? Yeah. Working as hard as I can to climb with a full Canadian Super B load. Now I'm back to the single trailer cooking again.
compact snow and ice, commercial with trucks only. Climb the other side of the valley. At the top, we've got a brake check. It's a bit away yet. Probably what, 35, 40 kilometers? trucks in left lane. I'm not really in the left lane. I'm kind of in the center lane. Why is there cars up here? How, how, how will our cars with pickups? How, how do those end up out here?
guys have to remember to clear off their lights on their trailers when they do their brake checks. Take her easy down Larson Hill. I guess it's just a single lane here now. Really keep an eye on my mirror, see if somebody comes up behind us and wants to pass. But I'm not going to be doing any passing on this kind of stuff. Normally it would take less than an hour to get from there to home, but by the washouts apparently the speed limits are greatly reduced, so I wasn't sure if that was a broken down vehicle, but it might be just a check stop. Construction site. Yeah, it might be construction. They might be working on that creek. Make sure that bridge doesn't get washed out as well. So I'm 
imagine those floods did a lot of damage for future floods in the spring when all the snow melts. It could be problematic. Us, but we are leaving a big cloud of snow behind us, so it's a little hard to tell. one of the spots that got washed out. I can tell it's been repaved underneath the snow to 80 kilometers per hour. So that, that's our first washout that we just drove over. 50 kilometers per hour. construction crew pick up over there. just drove into the ditch. Right in the median. 50 kilometers per hour? on the other side is gone. The center part's standing, but the, the end pieces are just gone. The highway's missing.
Ah, it's all kind of exciting to me because it's the first time I've come this way since all the washouts. Yeah, I'm glad they only have it open for commercial vehicles because I don't think this road could handle all the cars right now. kilometers per hour instead of 120 kilometers per hour or if you're US 50 kilometers is 30 miles 120 is 75 miles so according to my speedometer basically telling me which way I'm going. It's like, no, I don't like that lane. You're going to go drive over there, okay? Yeah, it'd be nice to know where the road was to play that, where's the road cam? Well, look at that bridge. Once again, it's just gone. There's one section in the center that's standing. Well, I guess there was a section on the side, but this end is just gone. But they didn't think they were going to open this until the end of February, and they opened it just before Christmas, so that was nice to alleviate some of the traffic on Highway 3 before Christmas and more people and personal vehicles can drive Highway 3. So I'm quite impressed that we're even on this highway yet. Minus 3 degrees Celsius right now, so it's fairly warm. Can we resume speed now? The driver in front of me disappeared. Signs. Did I miss a uh, speed limit sign? Ah, there's a resume speed sign. Okay. Although, I can't see where the road is. I mean, I can, but I've got to search for it, so I don't want to drive too fast.
rest area five kilometers ahead just before where the toll station used to be. I definitely think this is the slowest I've ever taken the Coquihalla, but good reason. Looks like we're creating two lanes here now. Speed limit 100 kilometers unless a variable speed limit sign says otherwise. Super B going up. Pickup coming up beside us. Two pickups. slow down and let the pickup finish their pass because the roads are not good enough to be hanging out beside me. Reason, but I'm not willing to pass anyone. Not in this stuff here. Spread some more gravel so we can see where we're going. Hey, at least I always open. webcams are all down. But we're doing good. Turn off my four-way flashers. And all of a sudden, pop! There's a truck.
this is where the uh, toll house used to be. Oh, my shoulder cam. I think maybe the battery died. to look how much battery was left on it so it's my best guess is the battery died on it should have just plugged it in No plow on the front. I see flashing lights in the way. Although there's no snow clearing going on, so I'm not sure. Let's see if we turn that side camp up back on. See if the battery is so dead that it'll, it just plugged it in. So, see if it's dead enough that the plug in can't keep up with it. Sometimes I've killed it so far that you have to leave it plugged in for a few minutes before I can record again. But it seems to be working right now. Brake check should be about four kilometers away or so. Jump out, check the brakes, check the load, the tarps, and clean off my lights. So the flashing lights, or is this one of the pickups turned on their flashing lights when they got brake checked? Didn't want to get rear-ended. So just slow traffic. No, no, no snow plow as I suspected because well, the roads are not clear. Hey, there's a snow pile. They do exist. It's moving a lot of snow too.
see by the tracks a lot of truckers have passed over here, but there's no point in passing right now. We're coming in up to a brake check. Just follow people in, do your brake check, and then head down. And hopefully, you have new people be in front of you. many trucks in front of me, hopefully there's room in the brake check. Oh, there goes a tow truck. Mario's. We still have quite a way to go, so this will be a very long video. Uh, top over here, everybody's taking their chains off. Because it is chain up off for northbound. So this is the very top of the Smasher, the very top of the Coca-Cola. The Smasher is just the next couple of miles from the top here to past the snow shed. And the Coquihalla is just between Merritt and Hope. The rest of Highway 5 is just called Highway 5. side. Looks like he's working on his front blade. But... He's desperately needed up here too. I guess since it's only, no, only trucks, nobody takes the straight away there. I would. If this was filled up all the way, I would go up there and just stop there because there's nobody driving on the highway. Just pull up over there, stop there, do your brake check, and then continue. It's a perfectly safe way of doing it. Okay, let's see where all you guys go. If you guys don't block it, my plan is to go there. 
and see how that goes. Same time I want to move. Everybody's getting out, clearing their lights, so that's good. Minus 2.5 Celsius outside. Not cold. guys so and also some of them might be an experienced driver and they drive slower than needed for for me but they're doing they're doing their part to stay safe.
once again, technically this is a six lane highway here, but we're all treating it like a four lane. Just like that, we're down the Smasher. We still have quite a bit downhill to go, but... I would drive a little faster. I'm just scared of catching up with someone too quick. You don't need to accidentally catch up with someone very quickly and then be in trouble. CVSE, probably just catching anyone that's going to drive by without chaining up. Yeah, that yard is full of people chaining up. Oh, well, there's one taker. He's going by. Oh, he's already chained up. Okay, so he chained up further, further down, or maybe in this line over here. Looks the highway's just closed with guys chaining up. Just like that, it's a truck that pops out. to the Sutro driver chaining up. I don't know why you guys aren't chaining up. They're just stopping down here. It's they're stopping down here, just chain up, it's mandatory anyway. Stop down here, chain up. You're coming in at a hot, hot, pretty high speed and you got a brake check ahead of you. during a snowstorm.
so I saw it in the comments someone mentioned uh, explain how wide load some places you need escorts and some places you don't some places you do escorts that is extremely complicated to answer 10 feet wide most places I don't need an escort certain distance length I need an escort in certain places if I have flashing beacons on top of the cab, I need less escorts. And every province, every state, the laws are so very, very different that you have to take it one load at a time. It's extremely complicated. Uh, the one load I took with 72 foot long beams from Oregon up to Vancouver I need an escort, and it depends on what kind of highways you're on. on. On some places on the freeways, no escort needed, but on the state highways, escort needed. So I needed an escort in Oregon from, uh, where was that? Uh, I can't remember where I loaded it, but it was towards Eugene. I had, I had to have an escort get to the highway. Once I was on the freeway, on the state highway, I needed an escort. Once I was on the freeway, um, escort no longer needed, so then I could drive all the way back to Canada, but as soon as I crossed the border, I needed an escort again. And then there's restrictions on when you can travel with certain widths of load in certain cities and certain states. It's complicated. It is really complicated. Each load you just have to work it out and figure it out. This load's only 10 feet wide, no escorts needed in British Columbia or Washington. There are travel restrictions for the wide load in Washington due to the snowstorm. Hence why we're on the Coquihalla. So yeah, it gets extremely complicated. There's no easy answer to that question. Vancouver has curfews for wide loads. Denver has curfews for wide loads. Some places it's a whole uh, county that has curfews for wide loads. There was a tow truck. I wonder if he's gonna pull that one up. That's uh, firing. Out wiring. I wonder if you can pull up that uh, truck that spun out uh, above the uh, bear, uh, bear uh, snow shed. It's smelling a bit fast down here. One degree. Minus one degree Celsius, just below freezing. Just kind of following the leader. Trying to leave lots of space between me and the trucks in front of me. He's already chained up. Super B with metal pipes. He's like, yep, I'm gonna chain up down here. Or maybe he's spun out coming up this hill. Yeah, here we can actually see the road. I'm thinking about passing, but lane is not quite there for me. Yeah, 
this is a fairly steep descent. spun out. There's this cab that's kind of sideways. He spun out and he's chaining up there now. Throw your chains over there, just back up onto the chains, click them together and off you go. One truck behind us. To keep an eye on him, make sure he doesn't try passing us, because if I'm thinking of passing, I'm sure other drivers are thinking the same thing. Don't need to cut into the lane like this like I'm right now if all of a sudden the truck decides to pull up beside me. Zero point five, it's getting warmer. Oh, there's a tow truck pulling up a bobtail. Can't see what company the tow truck is. Not one I recognize. I'm actually on purpose running both lanes now until I think there's a safe spot for a guy behind me to pass and I'm going to block both lanes. Because this is not two lanes here. It's not safe to pass here. off the Coquihalla. We just have to uh, climb up the rock cut and then we'll pop out in Hope onto Highway 1. I guess we'll pop onto Highway 3 and then onto 1. But we'll call it a day there. Really long video but I think it's worth it for the Coquihalla. Just beautiful winter wonderland complete white out on the top. Same spot to pass. Safer anyway. Well, maybe not. For a little bit there it was. really need to plow these roads. It was cool seeing those washed out bridges on the top there. I mean, it's a disaster, but it was interesting to see them. Yeah, I always had it in my head that the bridges that were washed out were down here, but yeah, I wasn't expecting them to be washed out up top over there. Lots of guys chaining up over here. Ah, there's a Sutco truck in there chaining up. 
With exactly the same load I just delivered today morning in uh, in Kamloops. Yeah, I think it'd be safe to pass here. Not much point since we're almost off the highway. Just wait. So yeah, the Coca Cola I used about one eighth of a tank, pushing all the snow. Used a lot of fuel. Super accurate. Zero degrees Celsius, right on the freezing point. This construction, I believe, is pipeline work. and waterfalls along the side of the highway. Kind of have a bluish green tinge to them. More of them the whole way along here, that's cool. Ten Mile Creek. stop and uh, walk some of the trails there along the old uh, railroad, through the old railroad tunnels.
direction, so the light's falling off. Yeah, I don't think I'd want to pass. I just touched the slush. It sure pulls you to the side quickly. We'll be happy here. Some of the mountains want to peek through the clouds. All right, one more last corner through the rock cut, and then we're off of this highway. Thank you guys so much for supporting me. Thank you for watching. Hopefully, uh, the video wasn't too much too long for my regulars. I know it was long. Hopefully you guys can just fast forward it or something. I'll speed it up a little bit. Eighty kilometers an hour. Oh maybe some of it was washed down. I'll look over here if we're slowing down. Seeing the big trees laying in the river. The river must have been just a raging torrent when it washed everything out. Okay, I think the signs are meant to be covered up and we're not actually at 110. I think the speed limit's still 60. They need to cover those up. How do you do all this construction in the winter and make sure the spring runoff doesn't uh, wash out a whole bunch of the highway as well? They did a good job of reopening the highway. It wasn't too bad. It was slower, but not too bad at all.
I thought it'd be snowing harder down here as well. Plus 0 0.5 here. The rock cut, see the rock cut? That's why it's called the rock cut. Alright, I'm out of here. I'll fade out as soon as we hit Highway 3. Thank you guys again so much. You guys rock. This video is brought to you in part by the letter C and these YouTube members. Cookie starts with C. What other things start with C? Oh, who cares what other things? C is for Cookie and that's good enough for me. Thanks for watching. I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. Thank <laughs> you.